Hey, good night all. We are back again with a special guest for an update. Uh, we have the one and only Mark Sargent with us. Um, Mr. Flat Earth. <laughs> oh, no. Seriously, that's how you're gonna that's how you're gonna intro me. Oh, great. <laughs> I've gotta do it. I've gotta uh, do it. That's I mean, this, fine. That's fine. There's, there's so many channels. There's so many people who you know. If you yourself, Rob Skiba, yeah, uh, Eric Dubé, you know the, the Globusters, Jerryism. Oh yeah. The RTH. Yep. Um are the main forerunners. I mean, there's clearly people who would say, you know, who started it first, who is the the, the originator, etc. But right. when you think of Flat Earth, those are the main names. Oh, we can't forget D Marvel as well with that, that you know, the excellent sort of... Oh, yeah, D Marvel's great too. Yeah. Um, so that's uh, that's why I've got to do it. Anyone that comes on, I don't know, obviously the, 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 um, the, the wonderful Patricia Steer as well, who hosts a lot of the... Um, the, the chats and right. conversation right. so we that's why I'm, that's why i've got to introduce you that's that way fine. because you are <laughs> you know you are the you are the you are <laughs> yeah I, so, I know i know and and in all fairness i i the only credit i'm gonna i'm gonna take here is that i created the dummies guide for flat earth you know the 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 easy intro so if again if flat earth is a university I am the freshman recruiter, and I get people through the door. And then after that, they can argue all they want about advanced maps and physics and NASA and tests and all that other stuff. I'm the guy that, that tries not to spook people, scare them too much, I, I tr which is why I try to be as approachable as possible. So in essence, a good way, you're the milk before the, the teeth are fully formed and then we can start to chew. Ah, very British. Yeah, yeah, I like that. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> so in essence mark obviously we, we've we've brought you back again because uh, it's still a, 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 an amazingly hot topic yeah. um in the uk there has been a number of uh, uh, well a number of conferences about well, three i think major conferences and quite a lot of meetups yeah we've got one bristol we've got one up in manchester shortly we had a major conference in birmingham right. which i believe you were I was, to? I was going to do it and then i got sidetracked and ended up going to a film festival in toronto where the first flat earth the full-fledged mainstream documentary premiered and that was literally okay. like in the same week okay yeah. well we'll touch on both of those things yeah, yeah, yeah. starting with the um the, the, the a conference local to ourselves in, in uh, sunny Birmingham as it is today. Mm -hmm. um, there was the ultimate. Ultimately, after the event, I, I, I was able to. I wasn't able to actually attend it live, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, I did reach out to the organisers, but there was clearly some. Uh, their agenda didn't marry up with a lot of what we wanted to do of sorts. So, mm -hmm. in essence, for what I what I know, there was no press allowed in the in the place okay um, which is a little bit disappointing but i did hear that the two major press outlets didn't manage to go in um i don't know how whether you're they're yeah you're not going to be able to keep the the media out forever and i i know that britain has has tried to take a little bit of a different approach than the united states because you know over here uh, media is just part of our lives you know there's so much yes. of it uh, not just mainstream, but now social media, which is just, it's, it's everywhere. You're not going to be able to escape it. And here's the reason why. If one media group gets in, which is what happened over there in, uh, in, on your side, if one gets in, the others don't have to get in. They're just going to, I don't even know if it's considered plagiarism. They just give it to the other people. Other people can can just take their other take the stories and print it kind of as their own and say, oh yeah, this group reported it at first, and everybody's happy. You know, nobody sues anybody for plagiarism anymore, and that's that's how it goes. So it's, escaping the media entirely is really really difficult. Yeah, most definitely. I I can understand the approach of sorts. Um, they're them trying to sort of control what, what sort of said because you know, as you yeah. say, there's hit pieces. Etc. Yeah. But at the same time, it's there are a lot. Of, there are a lot of open people 
across the world. Right. Um, it just depends on what information they're exposed to. Some people don't really understand the power of the internet oh, yeah. and what information you can get from it. So yeah. most people, I say 50%, let's, let's be very cop half full today. 50% right. of the people would just utilize it for, for, you know, comedy and entertainment, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And the rest will mix it up with actually let me research let me research again and understand understand what's going on in the sort of wider world mm -hmm. so putting that information out via the media allowing them to either run with it and be sort of objective objectively report the news or whether they're going to try and twist it right. it's still putting the information out there's no such thing as bad news because the news is there right. to be interpreted so i think it was a little bit of a mistake trustfully on the next event, it's going to be a little bit more open because there needs to be more eyes on it. The, the news that's been out, for instance, there's, uh, you was on, was it Good Morning, GMTV? With, oh, um, when, I, when I was on with Piers Morgan? <laughs> Piers Morgan, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was, I was, uh, boy, I was, my entire goal during that interview was to basically not get cut off. That was that was my goal, which was because I was coming in via video and everybody else was on set, including Terry Verts, one of our uh, former astronauts. And I it was kind of a last minute thing where they said, oh, yeah, and it's by the way, it's going to be in the middle of the night, your time, because, you know, it's early in the morning in in London. And oh, wow. Yeah. Good morning, Britain. It was I, I just I, I tried to be as friendly as possible. And they what killed me was that and i didn't realize this till the, till the interview was almost over was that terry verts would not speak with me would not speak to me would not say my name would not draw would not address any of my points well, honestly if you if you listen to it and cut out literally cut out all my chunks it would basically just be him interviewing with peers he there was yes. literally no interaction between us and it's like wow that's so he was under orders basically you gotta remember he retired and i don't know what the ranking system is over there he retired over here a full bird colonel in in the united states military it's like look you don't you gonna get to that high of a rank without being able to follow orders and he did it perfectly now he won't be able to yes. do it again that's a one-off but uh it was it, it worked pretty well for for that interview it did it, it definitely did yeah. um why I do think... you think that was? That he didn't want to speak? You there? Uh-oh. Guys, I can't hear anybody right now. Somebody here. Oh, didn't you hear? Now I can hear you. Didn't you hear? Okay, didn't you hear my co-host then? No. Speak him, Prime. Can you, can you hear me now? Now I can hear you. Okay, no problem, no problem. Now, the question was, I'm wondering, why do you think he didn't want to speak to you during this interview? Oh, uh, because the, I, the questions are too tough. I'll, I'll give you an example. The, the flat earthers make points that mainstream science or anybody tied to mainstream science really can't debate. I was supposed to do an interview with a Georgetown University uh, physicist. And this was through a British television team. And they said, okay, we're going to set this up in a certain way where you're not going to be able to talk over each other. You will say, ask your five questions in video format. We will give him the tape. He will watch it. We will record his responses and we'll just be shuffling tapes between the two of you. And so I came up with five scientific questions for him. They were really brief because they, they wanted it really brief. And the professor got him and that was it. He folded and, and that's it. He said, I'm not going to do it. And he, and he walked away. Think about, and that's a professor, mind you. Think about an astronaut. You know, I mean, really, they're they're rocket jockeys. What what are they going to know about anything, and in, in terms of scientific points? And so you don't want to be, you don't want to look like a fool on camera. So he was told basically, do not address anyone uh, along that side. I was stunned though, and because I was using his name, I even wished him a happy birthday. I did my homework on him. His birthday was literally the next day. He was turning fifty. And so they you know, wanted to be as nice as I could. And he would not, he just would not do it. He wasn't being mean or anything. It was like, it was literally like I wasn't there. It was, it was unbelievable because they could watch me on the monitor. They were all, the three of them, the two co-hosts, and he, they were watching me, but he wouldn't do it. So whatever, that's fine. Again, you can, you can get away with it once. The next time if they try it, I'm going to call them out on it. So bring me, bring me any other astronaut at this point. 
Yeah, definitely. It was great. It, it definitely got a lot of views. Anyway. Oh yeah. So how did it affect your channel after that? Did you um, have a lot? It, but the channel's the channel's been growing pretty steadily. The problem with that particular interview was, and it's happened with very very few, was that the uh, um, that particular network was so big that they copyrighted it. And I didn't yes. get a, I didn't get a strike or anything. They just said, "Sorry, you can't use it." They just blocked it, and so you could not watch the clip over here in the states. Uh, in fact, you couldn't watch it outside of their channel. And since they didn't really have uh, a YouTube channel that that pointed at us, nor did I. I don't even know if they put flat Earth in the title. Hardly anybody on our side saw it. I put it up, and it was up for less than a day, and then it was blocked. And it's like, all right, well. I mean, I've got it, but I can't show it to anybody uh, publicly, <laughs> which sucks. Are you, able to, are, are you able to just put the audio out? I probably could put... You know what? That's not a bad idea. I didn't even think about that until just someone's now. Put it up. Someone's actually got it up, but what they've did... Um, they've 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 put it within a TV screen. Right, right. Yeah. You can, you can do that. I, I, I try to stay away from that, but you know what? I may put up the audio. Sure, why not? Yeah. Why not? That couldn't yeah. hurt. That's that's not a bad idea. I could rip the audio out of that pretty quickly. Yeah, I think because it, it, it was a good exchange, and it, it's going to highlight, as you say, those pauses and those breaks where you are addressing right. the um, <laughs> right, Mister Mister Wizard. <laughs> yeah, I, I again, I understand. He, look, he's a, and people ask me that sometimes, and and we can talk about uh, uh, the National Geographic thing in a bit which was uh, one of the reporters from, from that group asked, said, oh, yeah, by the way, just so you know, I'm friends with Terry Virts. And this was very recently. It was, it was only a couple of weeks ago. And I go, really? And she goes, um, you know, are you calling? And this is an, an old ploy. It's like, are you calling my friend a liar? And I said, she's baiting me. And I'm going, well, you know, it's not like I'm saying he's a bad guy, you know, who wears a black hat and twirls a twirls his mustache and and laughs evil he uh, he's a military man you know he, they sign the agreements and basically says you have to keep secrets if not you will be put up for treason that's plain as simple as that and so if they tell him look you can't talk to anybody about any of this the whatever our space the details of the space program that's what he's going to do he's going to keep his mouth shut so that's what he did. So I, I can't I can't say, you know, he's a horrible, awful person. Is he is he lying though? Yes he is. And then of course she said, I take great offense to this and everybody in NASA should. I'm going fine. Fine, let him take offense. Not gonna change anything. So definitely you know. <laughs> yeah. It's it's a, it's an interesting stance to take. I mean yeah. it just shows you that okay, you, if you can present information, everyone should be at, at at an adult stage, especially being quote unquote highly educated. I mean, if you you should be going through a NASA system, right. a NASA program. Right. So you'd think, okay, I can employ critical thinking. So I've been taught this. Let's let's hear what this layman has to say, right. which goes totally against what I've learned. But let's actually challenge it. You know, really methodically. It doesn't right. seem that people do that. They they have a an automatic response. Well, there's, so what I was told. Wow. There, there's also a group think about that as well. It's not just what you believe; it's what you think everyone else around you believes. So it's kind of like you're standing with an invisible crowd around you, saying that, "Hey, we all know." The the quote I love is is it's it's been proven by so many people over the last X number of <laughs> centuries or millennia that it's a globe. And I come back and I say, "Really." I go, because it hasn't been proven. I, I go, the, the pe nobody proved it to you. They told you. That's the biggest difference. Everything else you can prove down here on the ground. Again, uh, the, the properties of water, the properties of fire, whatever is gravity, right? You can, you can experiment with stuff on the ground, but when it comes to the shape of the world, this is something you're told. You're told by the men in the white jackets, and mm -hmm. they, you know, I'm sorry, they, they tell you this, and they, they've been telling you this for the better part of five centuries, at least, which means your father and his father and going on down the line. And so you were born into it. You didn't have a chance. Uh, that's that's group think. You know, they they want you feel like you're part of this. You, you're part of the majority and mm -hmm. that we're the minority. It's like, oh, it's not as much of a minority as you might think. Anyway, sorry. It's my little rant. 
uh, it, it's also the, the the trendy thing. I mean, most people oh, yeah. these days. I mean, I guess what maybe fifty, mm, let's say twenty years ago, mm-hmm. it was kind of twenty plus years ago. Let's go back a bit further. It was cool to be an individual, right? You know, to 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 break from the normal. You know, to have your hair a bit longer, or however, whatever it was, you didn't want to be how the the quote unquote society told you to be, kind of thing. Right. You had the generations of peace, love, and happiness and all of that. And it grew up and grew up and grew up. And we got to a certain point, it just seemed like everybody, they don't want to be individual anymore. They want to fit that sort of, that carbon copy. Mm-hmm. They don't want to be out of line. They don't want to say the right thing, the wrong thing. You know, it seems like at the moment, there's all this social justice warrior type stuff. Everyone has, you know, wants to be all, you know, it, it stuff's wrong and we need to do make a change. But Nothing has really changed except for you know mass media and, and social media, but right. the, these atrocities have been taking place since we were before we were even born. Oh yeah, but yeah, yeah. Pe- cool people and have, trendy. Yeah, people have done bad things for a very, very long time, and social media. I mean, you remember for the longest time it was just media. Uh, over he- over here it was only three channels: ABC, NBC, and CBS for decades. And then the internet came along, and then high-speed internet, and then finally smartphones. And between the three of those, everything is so interconnected now to where even a rumor can spread so quickly that people are questioning. I mean, there's a lot more doubt out in the world for for things that we used to hold as canon, uh, you know, as gospel. It's now, it's like, okay, now it is questioned by a lot of different people. And you can meet up with people that share your views a lot faster than it used to be. Connectivity, most definitely. Mm. Um, you mentioned the, um, the Van- was it Vancouver? No, you in- not Vancouver. Why? What, like meetups or what? No, the Toronto um, Film Festival. Oh, Toronto, I'm sorry, the Toronto, the Toronto Film Festival. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, all of last year, we had a documentary team from Los Angeles follow around some flat earthers. And they, uh, they it was basically a... He, uh, presenting the people of flat earth so it wasn't a movie about is it or isn't it it's okay it's really really hot right now it's been getting hot hotter and hotter and here's some of the people involved and so they covered myself patricia jaron from jaronism bob from globusters nathan thompson from the the united states biggest uh flat earth facebook group chris pontius who makes the models and is that six one two three four five six I think that's all of them. And they follow us around different places. So we, we shot in San Francisco and Los Angeles. And I went down t- uh, to Houston to visit Patricia. And uh, sorry, did I say Patricia Steer? Patricia Steer. And uh, she and I went to NASA and gave them crap. And uh, you know, they, they were all over the place. And then finally, the, it culminated at the conference in Raleigh. And there were... So the film was finally finished at the beginning of this year. And there were 3,000 entries submitted to the film festival in toronto and only 100 and 110 were chosen and we were one of them which was great excellent uh, yeah it was really really fun and so we were invited patricia and i were invited to go up there and we spent the weekend in toronto uh with the director and the producers of this film who i mean we we were only the subjects we were not tied to the to the physical making of this film in any way we weren't producers or anything but we got a chance to see it on the big screen for the first time and it was amazing um, is it a flat earth movie as far as, you know, will flat earthers love it? No, because it's, it's shot from both sides, meaning not only do they talk to flat earthers, but they also talk to Scott Kelly, you know, an astronaut. They talk to a yes. psychologist. They talk to a, uh, different, different people from the science community. Psychologist, Mark. Let me just stop you there for a moment. Psychologists, on what what angle were they coming The angle you would expect, which is what (laughs) makes flat earthers believe in flat earth and is there something wrong with them? A type type of thing. (laughs) Because, I mean, the question has come up, you know, more than once. You know, my first week I was doing this, people are like, okay, are you (laughs) are you mental? It's like, no, no, I'm not mental. But at the same time, you know, I'm eccentric. That's for sure. Uh, but, but yeah, so they were talking to all these people. Now, granted, their pieces were pretty small in this, but they had to pepper them in there every once in a while to at least keep the audience from going off the rails because, 
uh, it's it's a really really heavy flat earth movie for the most part but flat earth is one of flawless victory so when patricia and i were up there for the second showing the director decided to announce that we were in the theater right and after the movie because they do a q a up front which we weren't a part of and within like the second question after we were announced the people didn't want to talk to the director and the producers anymore. They wanted to talk to us because we were the ones that, you know, that were pushing the flatter thing. And mm -hmm. there was a huge curiosity. And that's how I know that this documentary could potentially be one of the greatest recruiting tools we have. Because, again, it, it puts the seed in people's head. You remember all those people in the audience, with the exception of a few, were globalists. You know, they were globe believers. Yes. And this was amazing. So, yeah, if anyone wants to check it out. Uh, the trailer and everything about the movie is not it's not released yet. Uh, they're still looking for a distributor is at behind the curve film dot com. Uh, it's pretty cool. OK, I got well, I got one for you now, Mark. And this is I've been waiting a while to ask you this question on air. Yeah. The Tesla in space. Now, oh. when that was <laughs> when, that was <laughs> Every, when you read the comments, everyone was saying, you see, the Earth's not flat. The Earth's not flat. Right. Now, how do you explain that? Is that some kind of... Oh, how do you it was... That? Is that real or is it not real? Oh, my God, no. No, it was one of the worst productions I've ever seen uh, come out of any anything. Um, it was like they were trying to see if they could get away with faking space on the cheap. Could you do... You know, because NASA gets $50 million a day, so they, they've got money to spend. But Tesla, who, by the way, was not created by Elon Musk. It was created by some other guys. Elon Musk just bought Tesla. Now, everyone listening, don't forget that because I don't want the history books to like say, it's, oh, yeah, Tesla was created by Elon Musk. No, it's created by some other guys. He just purchased them outright. Uh, no different than sports teams that are bought by other people. It's like, you know, those guys didn't invent that sports team. They just took it over. Um no, here's the reason why uh, there's so many different... I made a video on, on dealing with this directly, and a lot of other flat earthers did as well. But the first things you got to look at are the car itself. Uh, the, the fact that they used this Roadster, and it was not prepped. He was, he was the first one to say, Elon said, we did not prep this thing for space. So unless he, they remember to take all the air out of the tires, and I mean every pound of pressure, those tires would have, would have blown up as, as tight as a drum and then detonated, destroying the fiberglass. That would have been the first thing. Uh, the windshields, both the, the front and the side windshields, uh, you guys don't get snow that much over there, but we do you know, over the United States. And look, if you've ever poured, you know, what they say is don't pour hot, warm or hot water on a cold windshield for a very obvious reason. You know, the stress on the material is too much and those windows would have spider webbed and, and shattered in two seconds. Um, any pressurized system, and I don't care if it's the window washer fluid or the transmission or any of the other brake fluid, anything that's compressed would have failed, would have burst because of the vacuum of space. Uh, the power of a vacuum is no joke. The paint would have blistered, uh, the dash, the, the plastic, and that's just garden variety plastic in that dash, that, that would have buckled in two seconds. Uh, oh boy, where else, where else could I go with this thing? Um, how about the things that you didn't see? Uh, one was the the rockets. Yeah, you saw those two booster rockets l land, but you didn't see the main rocket pull away, you know, break off and, and launch the car. You didn't see that giant Falcon rocket, you know, tumble off into the distance. And that's because they were trying to save the money in, in the video layers. But the part that bugged me probably more than anything, and people say, oh, it's kind of small, is, you know, you have two major companies there, one public and one private, and that is Tesla and SpaceX, right? How, how would you know that there wasn't a single logo on any anywhere mm -hmm. anywhere in those cars i mean we're talking this is the united states right we live for mm. advertising and marketing yes. and all those things we have our 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 motor car races you can barely even see the paint of the car there's so many logos corporate logos on those cars this car should have it a giant spacex on the side the hood should have said tesla i mean there should have been mm -hmm. logos everything it was like the logos on the car themselves were removed um even the fake astro heck the the astronaut itself uh, you know which was just this mannequin you know supposedly the the mannequin didn't have <laughs> mannequin any, yeah the yeah the mannequin didn't have any logos on it and not only that it's like okay 
why, why in the world would you waste a marketing opportunity? Meaning, why wouldn't you have, because there are corporations in this country that would pay top dollar for exposure like that. I don't know. One of them would be Disney, who owns Star Wars. You put a stormtrooper in that seat, and that thing pays yeah. for itself. You put Boba Fett mm -hmm. in the other seat, or something from Guardians of the Galaxy, or Iron Man from the Avengers. In fact, mm -hmm. why are you using a two-door car in the first place? Why would you use the Roadster? Why wouldn't you use your flagship car, which is a four-door sedan? Why, why not use that car? That's, that'd be great. Then you can do four seats and do all sorts of fun stuff. It was like they were doing the bare minimum to get this thing out there. And, in fact, I, I'll tell you this. that when, when the Because the, I was sent the, a screenshot like everybody else was you know, in social media. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, by the way, did you see this, right? And I, and I laughed. I honestly thought Jaronism had made that, that screenshot in Photoshop. <laughs> I, 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 I wrote back to whoever it was and going, ha, 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 very funny. I go, when did Jaron make this or whoever? Right? And they go, dude, no, that's real. And I was going what are you talking about it's real <laughs> they're going they're going no they, they they put a they put a sports car in space i'm going who wait what are you talking about and i'm just scrambling like running around i'm going i'm going trying to confirm this but here's the thing with social media you can gauge people's reactions in real time and i think they put it out there and then watch social media and said okay how is the public reacting to this and even a lot of the flat earthers i'm sorry not just the flat earthers but a lot of the the normal people that are out there they didn't believe it either they're going it looks fake it looks fake it, you know and, yeah, and yeah. a lot of people are saying that hey i, I I've, even if i wasn't a flat earther i would have looked at it because we've seen as you know you know we're years and years into the internet right uh, we everybody's been sent so many photoshopped images over the decades that you yes. look at this thing it's like yeah yeah photoshop boring in fact it's not even that interesting it's like there wasn't even a meme attached to it so it's like i i, I literally tried, was gonna toss it in two seconds and I, then i wrote back and i said oh yeah maybe i could use this you know you know who 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 has the original you know just it was a jaren and it's like no yeah so anyway tesla <laughs> was absolutely horrible terrible awful or oh, terrible <laughs> that <clears throat> sort of echoes the last thing you said echoes my thought because when i loaded up the old youtube and i um, went to the home page i saw a few of those videos i think may have been via your channel maybe even jeremy some I, I saw it a few times even on the suggested side and, and i was wondering i'm thinking is this like the new is someone again as you said is this a meme or something yeah yeah and it wasn't for the first i think it was it took me about two days until I actually heard someone talking about it. I said, oh, they've got a Tesla in space. Right. And I heard it on the news. And I just didn't put the two and two together because, as you said, it looks so unbelievable. Yeah. And then when you look at the footage, you're thinking, well, there's all this talk about flat Earth. There's all this stuff pre-flat Earth about them not going to the moon and stuff. And there's a very strong evidence to say that there's, there's no way that took place. Right. So where's the 4K cameras of every single conceivable shot that you could think of right and why is that not being beamed across the world right right and and with the tesla stuff why wasn't any of the footage that they had mucked up it was flawless meaning you know mm -hmm. there wasn't a single crackle of static except for that one shot that apparently was out of sequence where supposedly the capsule opened up and the car came out even though we never saw exactly what happened and they should have shot that from the front not the side uh yes. a fine a fine example of misdirection and even i bought it for the the first four or five hours which was they landed those two rockets simultaneously down in florida and then they immediately cut to the car saw a side profile shot of the car i was going and, and i was going wow interesting right and i'm going wait a minute why would you sh where where's the booster rocket or where's the where's the main rocket why why would that happen and and it's like you would never also you would never land those two rockets simultaneously right next to each other for safety concerns because you know you yes. got for the same reason you don't have two helicopters landing next to each other you don't want anything to go wrong but you have to shoot it that way for the public because otherwise they're going to get confused and that is okay is that rocket one or is that rocket two because they look identical and you don't want to confuse them it's like well let's just land them right next to each other it's like, uh, it looks good on camera, but in reality, you'd never, ever do that. Uh, just, oh, it's just, it was just, it, you know, the, the shots of the earth 
you know, it's spinning around, spinning around. I'm going, okay, is it supposed to be going somewhere? Because apparently no one's steering this thing at all. There's no retros. There's no stars in the background. And then they just cut off the feed at one point, even though there's no static. It's not like the other signal's getting weaker and weaker. It's it's like, okay, and the battery is now dead. It's like, wait, wait, what? What do you mean the battery's now dead? You, that's, you just declared that the battery's dead and... Uh, yeah, it was, it's just. I'm sorry. I could I could talk for a long time on that Tesla thing. It just drove me insane. <laughs> oh, it's just awful. But I'm I'm glad that the average person. I've watched too many videos of people responding to that video, not our stuff, but responding to that video who said it looks fake. And I think that's what they wanted to find out, which was okay. Mm. How cheap can we do this without the public immediately just saying yeah i'm not buying it at all there was enough people responding that i don't think you're ever going to see another car in space which is sad because if you really wanted to make some money off of this uh and i know you couldn't uh and that is i'm sure just about every other car manufacturer called up tesla almost immediately said hey what will it take to get a truck in space you know what well, you know <laughs> we, we'd love to get our i mean it's a great advertising gimmick and but you you can't because you you know anyone that gives them the truck they'd want to make sure everything was set up just so and you know you can't you can't let them in on it so it's it's an inside job and it worked to a, a limited capacity but yeah for the most part I think it was it just played very terribly. But the press the press was really behind this thing. It oh, was it, really oh come on the the press the, the any time Elon Musk says anything. He, he gets press, and that's because in our society now, if you make a few billion dollars, uh, you will get, and, and you say something, they consider it uh, to have some impact on civilization. Every headline, everything that he has said over the last, I don't know, ever since he's been giving headlines, the last two or three years anyway, has been nothing it, it it would make it there's such bold futurist predictions it's like drunk futurist predict, predictions meaning hey the puerto rico that got hit by that hurricane right it's like i'm going to solve puerto rico's power problems and with with tesla technology you know with, i'm sorry with um you know with our whatever solar generators never happened we're going to send two people around the uh tourists around the moon and back with uh with our, our space program, with our SpaceX Falcon rocket. We're going to do it in 2018. Nope, that, it's 2018 now. No one's even talking about it. It's never, ever going to happen. We're going to colonize the moon by 2030. Nope, uh, we're going to start launching to the moon 2022. Nope, that's not going to happen. Uh, I'm developing a super plane that is going to fly from the United States to China and it's going to cost cheaper than a first-class ticket. Uh, what was the last one he just did? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, he's going to drill, he's going to make a super underground subway from San Francisco to Los Angeles, something like that, with a drilling technology that's straight out of sci-fi, and <laughs> that's going to be a thing. It's, what do you, he, I mean, the, the stuff he comes up with, I don't know if they're just letting him go or if somebody's feeding him these headlines, but they're just, it's not that they're just bold, they're ridiculously bold. Even your best sci-fi writers would never take that sort of stance they just yeah. wouldn't and so yeah nothing nothing literally nothing he has ever said has come true not even close and yet the media every time he he does a press release the the media puts it out there because hey he's a billionaire fine he made some money off of paypal lots of people on the internet have made money it doesn't mean he's some sort of soothsayer that you know sitting in the back of a cave with a pointy hat and a long beard dispensing sage-like wisdom Sorry, it's my little rant. <laughs> Sorry, I hate that guy. But, but you've painted a very vivid picture. That's exactly what people think of of Mister um, Mister Moss. Yeah, they do. Thing. He He's, was he was in an Iron Man movie, where where he's actually talking to Tony Stark. They they're they're comparing him to like a real life Tony Stark. It's like no, no. He he he's a he's a he's a PayPal guy that that helped devise PayPal, which as you know made a little bit of money. And that's all he did. Well, wait a minute! Did did he not just buy shares into PayPal? Well, I I'm pretty sure he helped develop it. He was one of the. Okay. It wasn't that he just bought shares. He was well, yeah, he okay. bought shares, of course, but he was literally there on the ground floor of PayPal. I see. Which is great. I mean, get to remember the PayPal was a tricky deal. There were multiple companies that were trying to to be the PayPal. You know, to be that group that, that you would transfer money, the biggest money transfer service. Is that now. Cash App now? Yeah, how's that getting under Cash App? The what? In America. You've got in America something called the Cash App, ain't you? What's meant to be 
a PayPal competitor? Uh, it's it's tough to to be once you. I, I'm not saying that monopolies are good, but once you become like the brand name, kind of like Google. You know, people actually use the word Google as a verb yes. now, where they say, oh, just yeah. Google it instead of search it. Just Google it. Right. Do you know how much free advertising that is? Um, eBay is, is. Has anyone ever challenged eBay? No. If you want to buy cool stuff, you know, you know, you know off the what, you know, stuff that's that's hard to find. You go through eBay, uh, PayPal. I remember the rivals, you know, kind of like no, no different than um when a final point you know like go all the way back to the early tech like vhs versus betamax Beta that sort Max, of stuff yeah. you know and then late, like was it what was the 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 one after that it was blu-ray versus laser disc well there was ultra dvd or super dvd i don't know but if there's always competition always 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 but once somebody's established it's tough it's look at look at Microsoft when they owned the operating system for the longest time and they were antitrust suits that were being filed out there. I mean Microsoft like here's a perfect example. You remember Netscape? Yes. Like Netscape, I'm old enough to remember like Netscape was like the browser uh, the, and then all of a sudden but remember they charged for it. Not a lot of money, but they charged for it. And Microsoft mm -hmm. says, "Yeah, by the way, we're going to release a browser with our operating system. It's absolutely free." <laughs> and that was it. That was it was over. Yes. Net, Netscape was was done. So Anyway, sorry. What else? We it's, it's history. It's history, though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it, yeah. It, I mean, it's it, how it's how things go. And history is there's there's an old saying: history is written by the winners. You know that one. But the one that yes. I liked better was by Napoleon, where he said that history is just lies that are agreed upon. Which is oh yes. Like why not? <laughs> I mean, like you get a bunch of men in a room, and usually, and they say, okay, how are we going to spin this? What just happened? Uh, I was like, oh, okay, you know, let's, let's, which is, I mean, honestly, we've been doing that in the United States for ever since we became a country. We've been spinning, you know, how we got this far to where not even, not even five years ago, they were trying to remove things out of our history books like, oh, I don't know, slavery and uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. They were literally trying to pull those yeah. out. And you know, there's that's not going to happen. You know, you, you can't. You, you, I know you want uh, the United States to be the good guys, and we sometimes we try, but most of the time we we end up being like uh, the Empire in Star Wars. Well, since you've you, you've brought up those two um, Nagasaki and mm, Hiroshima, Hiroshima, yeah. What is actually is there any is there any sort of commemorance or memorial done on a on a yearly basis in respect um, to what america did to, there, in that respect there might be but you had to remember it, it's kind of a paradox when it comes to our media which is in over here i know it's a little different over in 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 the uk but over here it's it's it revolves around some sort of violence meaning if it bleeds it leads that's mm -hmm. you know, for ratings. If it's something like a, no different than a car wreck, car wreck, you know, a car wrecks on the freeway. Why does everybody slow down? Because they want to see it. It's like, holy smokes, what happened to them that I'm so glad it didn't happen to me. Uh, but so when it comes to uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, it's not something because it's, it's tied to our government and kind of tied to policy. We don't really try to amplify any sort of anniversary every year. Now, there's going to be anniversaries every once in a while, sure. Uh, the big ones, you know, 10, 20, 50, or 25, and stuff like that. But for the most part, we don't, again, we tried to remove it from the history books because it's kind of, it's one of those, uh, you know, like a, I, I don't, I, how should I compare this? I really can't. Some sort of domestic violence that you you don't want to talk about if you want to try to do a microcosm of it. And so, yeah, we just don't really want to. Kind of like, oh, heck, if you're going to go down that road, talk about the Native Americans, which we don't. <laughs> <laughs> that was the next one I was going to bring up. Oh, were you? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, we've got sports teams, you know, the Cleveland Indians, the Washington Redskins, yeah. and the Florida Seminoles and stuff like that. But you don't see a ton of documentaries on the on the uh, Native Americans. It's it's just well, not. Yeah, indeed, and and also even that term, even that term, so isn't that an an offensive term? A Native American. Um. Well, it's less offensive than I don't know if there is any other term. It's. I mean, they've got their tribe names, of course, which yes. we, all, we 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 use for corporate branding. 
But the remember, we, remember we used to for a long time. We used to have Indian head pennies. <laughs> You know, our pennies oh, used to used to have an in, Indian chifa. Yeah, we don't have those anymore. Um, and I'm pretty sure that uh, here's here's another one. Uh, we used to have you know crayons, Crayola crayons. There used to be a color in there called Indian red. For I mean, Indian red. All, all the way up into yeah. when I was going through grade school, that was there. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, we we. <laughs> We we we've, we've done a lot. Of, we we try to do what we can to minimize our bad deeds, but we've got a bunch of them out there. Sorry. America is has a, a very colorful history. Um, yeah. Most definitely. I mean, it's, yeah. it's one of the youngest nations, as I always have to like to point out. Modeled yeah. a little bit off the Magna Carta, twelve fifteen, and clearly the the Bible, the Old Testament and stuff too, that brings forth the Constitution. Right. Um, right. Yeah. And then obviously you're, you're the, 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 uh, the broken English, which is known as American English. Oh, which... right. And all the different uh, different accents, which I love. Uh, there's so yes. many, so many different until and, and most of them are on the East Coast. But when you get to about to the middle of the country, with the exception of like Texas, they kind of all disappear, which is interesting because all the news media organizations, they all talk with a strictly um, Western accent, which what I'm talking with now. I mean, there's no twang. There's no, yes. no, no real inflections. And people say, you know, it's like, well, that in itself is its own accent. I go, yeah, I suppose it is. But because the media uses it exclusively. It doesn't matter mm-hmm. where you are. I mean, if you live in Alabama, if you live in Texas, if you live in New York, all the newscasters, local and national, they all use that same accent. I don't know why they picked that. It's the, um, it's universal for our country. I, I thought it was very interesting. The one, the wonders of of langu- language and linguistics. Right. Um, slightly moving on a little bit yeah. to um. A, 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 a a talking point of sorts around um, Joe Rogan. Oh, yeah. And ticks. Um, he seems to constantly bring up Flat Earth. He's not, not dumb. I, I wouldn't, yeah, he's not I wouldn't dumb. say on every... Go ahead. He definitely isn't. He definitely isn't. But the, the thing that is what it seems to me, based upon the, the amount of time I've been listening to, to Joe Rogan, the JRE experience and stuff, he's... He, Covers a lot of different topics, um, has a, a major variety of, of guests, etc. Right. Um, but it, it's clear that over the last, um, I don't know, maybe what five years or so, yeah, his position has just totally. He's done like a one eighty. So he was all into aliens. He was all into nine eleven. He was all into pretty much, pretty much everything. To be fair, right. And now his stance has just totally changed. He's, he's, you know, he, he gets quite uncomfortable at times. Sometimes when Eddie Bravo goes on on, on his um right. on the on the on his podcast because right. they kind of incite him into this kind of conversation, and then he gets all upset and kind of ridicules him. No, you're crazy. You shouldn't be thinking all these these crazy. These are conspiracy things. You're wasting your time and this and that. And it, it almost seems like he's. I don't know, like Com- compromised. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Alex Alex Jones did a little story on him last year, where he said that that Joe confided in him that, and that they had got to him, and it's not it's not any sort of groundbreaking revelation. There, he was like you said, like five years ago, he was a big conspiracy guy, which is interesting because he played. I think he got into it because he got into character on a, on a, he was in a television show years and oh, geez, 20 years ago called News Radio where he played yes. a um, I think a maintenance guy or a producer or uh, one of the camera guys I can't remember exactly what his role was there but who was a conspiracy guy in the show and I think he just followed that along and you know kind of like Dan Aykroyd he's actually really into ghosts and and all the occult stuff and yes. he knows all that stuff that st- the role he played in the Ghostbusters was not a stretch for him in the slightest uh but <laughs> but Joe Rogan he uh I I loved him I in fact I enjoyed listening to him because he was his big thing was he went against the moon landings and said the moon landings yes. were junk 
They were mm. awful. They were fake totally. And he had such conviction. And in any sort of debate, if both sides are, are relatively equal, conviction will win out the day. Who who seems more convinced themselves that yes. their, their topic is right? And he destroyed people. And he was winning. And then all of a sudden, he went silent. And nobody heard from him for a little while. And then when he came out of his silence, he had a brand new television show on the Sci-Fi Network, uh, a one-year contract. And in the very first episode, he recanted and basically took back and might as well have just apologized to anything bad he ever said about NASA. I'm just like, whoa, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, it'd be one thing if you just had the show. That would be suspicious enough. But to retract, not, not informally, like your opening your opening sequence is oh yeah i totally believe in nasa now it's like okay so they gave him a show they didn't they didn't have him do a guaranteed thing where he was picked up for two or three years but then he became one of the most prolific podcasters in social media uh and when he when he changed over to that and that's what he does now you know he does a show i think freaking every day and he can get just about any guest he wants on that show and he gets yeah. he's brought on Neil deGrasse Tyson several times. He's gotten uh, astronauts multiple times and physicists. And when the flatter thing started coming out, I think he knew a good thing when he saw it, regardless whether he believed in it or not. He knew it was good ratings and he knew that attacking the flat earth would get him just about as good ratings as if he was actually believed in flat earth. In fact, maybe yeah. even more so because then he could get guests on to attack it with him. And that's what, mm. and that's what he did. He 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 brought up, he brought up flatter so many times. I lo I literally lost count of how many different people. He just that would be one of his things. It's like he'd bring on a guest and and say, "Hey, what do you think about these flat Earth idiots?" Or he yeah. or he'd bring on a guest uh, specifically to go after the flat Earthers, and that was to this day. That's what he that's what he did, and Eddie Bravo kind of helped him in a way because Eddie Bravo was the the loose cannon side of Joe Rogan. Yes. Yeah, he's a good friend of Joe Rogan, but Eddie Bravo does his own thing. And Eddie Bravo even went so far as to interview Eric Dubé on Eddie Bravo's it, it, podcast. It, Brought him in on yeah. video. The connection was horrible, and they ran too long, and, and Eric decided he was going to go off the rails. Uh, and I predicted that to, almost to the minute. I said, if Eric is under 90 minutes, if they keep the interview under 90 minutes, he'll be fine because he'll only get out the information. He won't st start going off into his personal <laughs> opinions about the Flat Earth community. But no, yeah. they ran long. He got comfortable. And it's like, then he just started attacking everybody, including which I felt bad because, uh, you know, as a, um, as a producer, you hate to see it, which is he attacked uh, Alex Jones. He did an impression of Alex Jones on Eddie Bravo's show, and and Eddie Bravo is a friend of Alex Jones, and and, er yeah. and there is Eric Debay just going. I mean, it wasn't a short little dig. He was going on for five, ten minutes to where they accidentally cut him off, and when they brought him back on, they didn't bring him on with video, and so <laughs> it, it was. I missed that one, that part. To be fair. Oh yeah, you ought to watch it. I mean, he was doing a really bad impression of Alex Jones. You know the whole rah 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 rah. rah. You know, the whole, you know, ang you know, when Alex gets into character and he starts getting all. Oh, that was another thing, by the way. If anyone has is a huge fan of Alex Jones, uh, he went to court last year and, uh, you know, old child custody. No, no, no shock there. And he confessed to the judge that everything that he did in his show was an act. It was a character. It was a role. And so any you know anyone that thinks again i i'm not going to pick on like world wrestling federation stuff and all that and anyone that's anyone knows that it's good theater the world wrestling stuff alex jones yes. is a different kind of theater but he it, you know the fact that he's admitting to it uh, didn't yeah. help him much that's for sure anyway so there you go Mr. jones yeah it's it's i mean also you as you say you brought up um Eddie Bravo, who brought uh, Eric Dubé on. Yeah. Um, what do you think has happened to, to that guy? I mean, er Eric or Eddie? Yeah. Er Eric? Because, uh, I mean, I'll Eric, get on Eddie in a minute because here, I think that there's, there's well, no, Eddie's can, a bit. I can, tell you, I can tell you what happened to Eric. Eric wouldn't listen to anybody. 
Uh, Eric has created a bunch of good content, no question. His Twitter yeah. proofs is, is really good. And he was making a lot of videos and he did some good interviews and everything was going fine. Where he ran into a problem and it was, it, it's been there since the beginning, was he, his extracurricular stuff. And I don't mind saying this is like, because I'll, I'll be as gentle as I can. He's anti-Semitic. Plain and simple, he does not like Jewish people. And he goes, so when he makes 30 flat earth videos and then he makes uh, one that says, how, you know, how much I don't like Jewish people. And, you know, I, I won't go into the details. It, it's like, you can't really mix the two. It's really, really tough yeah. to where um, I was talking to. Well, is he, well, is he presenting, because I haven't, well, I think I, I know what you're alluding to. I haven't actually watched those videos, um, but it, is the information that he that he's presenting is it credible and logical or is it just totally farcical oh you mean the the jewish stuff yeah oh, well most of its reprints it's not like he's coming up with his own original thoughts but when you make a four-hour video called adolf hitler versus the jew world order and you put use adolf hitler as your thumbnail you're gonna you're gonna raise a few flags to yeah. where okay. eventually and i warned him i've warned him so many times i you know even though he and i have never spoken directly i went through channels and i said look don't keep doing this eventually what's going to happen is flat earth is going to get high profile enough that someone's going to look at you and they're going to say oh yeah i hate speech and they're going to they're going to come after you and that's exactly what happened uh, eventually okay. somebody somebody looked at his channel and you know especially this year you know over the last 12 months like there's a certain hypersensitivity that's out there you know for for race and gender and sexuality mm -hmm. and his channel was destroyed it was taken down. He had 120,000 subs and it was wiped out overnight and it could not be appealed. And because it's hate speech, it's it's different from yeah. getting a copyright strike or something like that. And he's been trying to build it up since then. And, you know, he's only up to 30,000 subs. And wow. also for whatever reason, the other the other thing, he's not leaving Thailand. Uh, he has had multiple chances. Look, he was invited to every conference, you know, despite his views. He was invited to everything because he'd been he'd been there, you know, to the, in mm. the in the community. And he, uh, I have it through a fairly credible source that he's not going anywhere. He's I don't know if it's if it's a fear of a no fly list. I don't know if whatever. But he he kind of tipped his hat, tipped his hand, tipped his hand. Whatever. He gave it away when, I'm sure I said that wrong, The um, he gave it away when he was on Eddie Bravo's show because Eddie Bravo asked him uh, to come down to somewhere in the Pacific Rim, you know, like one of the Indonesian islands, because Eddie Bravo was going to do a martial arts thing out there, right? It was not going to okay. be that far away from, from Eric. And and Eddie said, oh, yeah, I'll get you some backstage passes. It'll be really great. We'll, we'll have a lot of fun, right? Because, again, Eric's also into martial arts. And... Eric didn't even hesitate. He was like, there was a certain fear in his eyes. He's like, no, no, it's not going to happen. I'm not going to do it. It's like, wow, seriously, you're going to, you're going to blow him off on air. You're not even going to say, oh yeah, that sounds like fun. And then write him later, politely say, sorry, I can't come. You're actually going to say there 10 seconds in and say, you're not going to go. I don't know why exactly he's in Thailand, but I, he's not going anywhere. So that's Eric. I don't, I don't worry about it at this point because he's, the community has gotten so large that mm -hmm. we, you know, everybody's, look, we've got conferences booked and we don't need him to be a part of it. And he, and he, he has been more than happy to accommodate that, that view on our side. He's, he's distanced us to where uh, I'll end it on this, where, when he was, he was on the, the interview with Eddie Bravo. And he says that everybody in the conference is a shill. He literally called it Shill Fest 2017. And that, uh, that the only the only true flat earther is him. And it's like, okay, don't don't say yeah. don't sound like a religious cult leader or anything, but <laughs> you're you're going down that road. So uh, what, can you, just for, for my purposes and maybe for some other for some of the listeners, yeah. could you confirm what is a shill? So I hear these terms oh, yeah, 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 thrown yeah. around loads of times, like, uh, and I'm unsure of exactly what the meaning That's is. A, no, it's a good point because there are people that latch on to that term without actually fully knowing what it's about. Uh, it is, the, the, the term initially comes from the word shillaber, 
which is a carnival's car, carnival guy's assistant. So you're thinking, okay, what does that mean? So if you're ever, I don't know what you guys do for like for fairs and carnivals over there, but like, do you have things like the ring toss? You throw three baseballs at some milk bottles yes. and crap like that. Okay. So let's say you're you're doing the ring toss and 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 it's like three three throws for a dollar, win a teddy bear for your your girlfriend, blah blah blah. Right? That's the carnival guy. The guy on the outside, what you do what you do is you make it seem this is an old trick. This goes back thousands of years. It's an old trick. You have a guy saying, "Oh yeah," and he's holding a teddy bear already. I did it on my first dollar. It was easy. And so he's working for the, the ring toss guy, but his appearance is that he's not, he's just one of you and that he, you know, and you're like, oh, okay, I think I'll give it a try too. 20 bucks later, he still don't have a teddy bear. And then the, you turn around and that guy's gone. The guy that had the teddy bear, he's gone. Um, it's an old street trick that um, if you've ever yeah. played like three card Monty always yes. always there's three card monty it's like oh yeah guy behind you says oh yeah i totally won 20 bucks totally got the card right away even though it's a complete mm -hmm. scam that's what a shill so shill is short for shillaber which is somebody that's working that appears to be working for you uh, working with you he's on your side mm -hmm. but actually he's working on the other side so he is uh the 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 other version of it would be it's a short version of saying controlled opposition and I can't remember who did ah. the, the initial quote, and that is the the easiest way to um, infiltrate an opposition or something like that is to control it. Meaning you you put your people in there, and then eventually you have those people actually directing it. You don't have just general members. You make sure that officers of whatever group you're talking about are the you know, are controlled. That's it's one of those things. And so when any group pops up, there's always people that say, especially if you get disagree with people that say, oh, well, if you disagree with me, you must be working for the other side. And I was like, I, to this day, I don't, I don't even, I still don't think that I could say that there's any shills in Flat Earth at all because I've met them all. And I've hung out with them. And, well, I shouldn't say I've met them all, but I've met a lot of them between the conferences and the meetups. And doing mm -hmm. the live, live hangouts and stuff like that. And everybody appears to be pretty much as advertised. I mean, nobody's squeaky clean, mind you. Course, you know, everyone, you know every once in a while you run into somebody who has a checkered past. But as far as government agents, come on. It's, you don't so, need... Anyway, go ahead. So to, to try to get into the psychology of that, then. So you, you, you just define what the shin is, then. So... Right. I, I, what, what, I'm trying to find out, uh, uh, well, in a stand, what, uh, what would this government agent get out of infiltrating? Uh, is it to, to, to cause disharmony or is it to gather information? Well, that's, like, what would this that's shell just be it. doing? Yeah, if, if you're going to infiltrate like a terrorist group, that's one thing because eventually you're going to shut them down. Or if you're going to like law enforcement, they do it all the time. You know, you send guys under deep cover into yeah. cartels and drug operations because eventually you're going to shut them down eventually that would be the goal of any any ticket group you don't make it bigger you disrupt as much as you can and then you shut it down flat earth has been going gangbusters and it just keeps getting bigger almost exponentially uh, every every year and so if there are shills they're doing terrible jobs i mean you would never want to talk to the media You'd want it seem to make it seem like a joke. You'd want it to make it seem like there was no credibility to it at all, and that's what a that's what a government agent would do. They would shut it. They would eventually, eventually, sooner or later, you would have to shut it down. But with something like this, you would never let it get off the ground in the first place. You'd bury it immediately. You'd you'd get in there and then you'd okay. make a whole bunch of videos to discredit it. Really awful videos. You'd get the media to help you, and that's not what happened. We see the exact opposite. Uh, you know the the Google searches. You could you if you wanted to shut it down, the Google searches alone could 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 stunt it to where it would never go anywhere. Uh, the YouTube searches, which is also owned by Google, it, it's easy. I mean that's that's coding 101. That is very very easy. You just say if you see flat or Earth or any combination of these words, you never recommend those videos to anyone. And there's the opposite. We have people complaining because flat Earth videos are recommended to everyone. Because people keep watching them, it's it's infectious. Well, uh, okay, let's play right to Africa. Mm -hmm. So maybe, 
and this is this is kind of falling on the more of a skeptical side. Maybe this has been put out um, to take people's attention away from other serious or yeah. reports, conspiracies. Yeah, so sure, the, the sure. 9/11 Truth Movement, for instance, uh, the Waco, Texas. The you know we can go on and on and, and on. And uh, that's... the military. And there are people that feel that way. In fact, I know some dedicated trolls that feel, and, and I understand that, and which is uh, that the rabbit holes only go so deep and no deeper, meaning 9-11 is the ultimate of all conspiracies, and there's nothing bigger than that, and I take pride in the fact that 9-11 is the biggest conspiracy ever, and then all of a sudden you show them Flat Earth. What do you think they're going to do? It's all of a sudden, it's like all all this energy they spent in 9-11 has now been diminished has now been uh, overshadowed by this monster, this Goliath that's that's flat earth. However, I go the other way and I say, because I've seen it too many times with conspiracy people, if you, uh, people that believe in all sorts of conspiracies, but they will not believe in flat earth. And I say, look, if you can get your head to absorb even a fraction of flat earth, you're going to believe everything else. Meaning, if you know, if you didn't believe in Sa Sandy Hook, or if you didn't believe in 9/11, or Pearl Harbor, or every American war, or anything like that, you will now, because flat Earth opens up your mind to everything. It is it's literally the op ultimate open-minded test to where nowadays, not only do I not do anything malicious to anybody, but I can't even judge somebody. So if somebody literally came up to me and said, "Oh yeah, by the way, I know a guy that swears." that Elvis had Bigfoot's baby. Normally I'd be like, okay, yeah, you can go away now. Now I can't judge this guy. I'd be like, okay, I'll give you a few minutes. What do you got? Why not? How, how can I? It'd be hypocritical. I open my day with flat earth, you know, flat earth on toast. So what, what, what's crazier than that? And so, so anyone that says that it's distracting from the others, I see I, in the short term, yes, of course, because flat earth is all consuming. You know, people people go down that road and they don't sleep for two weeks and they just watch tons of flat earth videos. There was a, a guy that worked for YouTube that came out recently that said he goes, uh, the average flat earth or person that gets into flat earth watches like 20 flat earth videos in a row. What do you think we're going to recommend to people? Right. Because people are complaining. It's like, why are why is flat earth just keep getting recommended? Uh, but once you get through it and once you get past the enthusiasm, then it's like the, the whole shelf of conspiracies that was getting gathering dust. Now you gotta go back and look at them again in a different in a different light. And so far, I think that's true. Everyone, it's like nobody I've never seen anyone that goes into flat earth that all of a sudden that says that that 9-11, uh, you know, isn't isn't a valid you know argument anymore. What they'll do is those like kind of like me, although I'm a little different because I'm, I'm really, really hardcore, which is I say I don't really care as much about 9-11 because how could I? Flat Earth is, is bigger. It's a hierarchy of, of things. It's kind of like, you know, why, why, why would I watch high school baseball when I can watch the major leagues? Type type of thing, but it's not to say that it's not there and I will talk about it. If somebody asks me questions about it. Oh, yeah, you bet I'll chime in. But it is not going to be my uh, on my my daily checklist of things to look at, because right now flat Earth is my church. Cool. Yeah. Mark, you still there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Okay. Sorry, I yes. when I when I end sometimes, I'm sorry. <laughs> you guys don't know because I'm rolling and rolling. But in in my mind, it's like okay, I'm going to end on this word. But uh, sorry. Anyway, <laughs> so Mark, at the minute, there's like this. It's being spoken about across the internet. Yeah. About this censorship and um, YouTube. Is it true that YouTube are targeting you guys as well? The flat. No, community? no. We dodged the. What you're talking about initially was, and I don't even know if it was censorship as much. It was over here. Was called the adpocalypse, known as you know cross between advertising and and the apocalypse. Uh, that was because there, as you know, there's a lot of rabbit holes in YouTube and YouTube being that they were owned by Google thought they could flex their muscle. And it's like, you know what? We're going to put our corporate advertisers because like it's no different than television. You know, so like if Chevy trucks wants to advertise on videos, you make sure they, their videos are, you know, their trucks are advertised on videos, but YouTube wasn't caring. It's like, you know what? We're just going to put them on anything. 
So it doesn't matter what what the video was. They would they would put these advertisers, and the advertisers started to complain. It's like, no, we only want appropriate videos. And it's like, well, it's a lot of work. We don't want to do it. Plus, you know what? We're Google. We're bigger than you. So who cares? And eventually what happened was the, the corporation started pulling away the advertising dollars. And so Google's only response was, okay, maybe we can help clean up, kind of like cleaning out the, the bad parts of town. Let's clean up some of the, the stuff that's out there. And so they targeted some conspiracies. They really focused on the shootings. So if anyone was critical of any of the shootings that are over here, they, they really cracked down on those a lot more than they used to. And... The, but the fallout on our side, on the on the flat Earth side, because remember it's flat Earth. It's it's still fairly positive compared to other conspiracies that are out there. We lost about I think ten percent of the videos that were out there, which isn't you know it seems like a lot, but it really wasn't that much because we've got a lot a lot of content out there. And so once that calmed down, uh, it kind of helped us in the end because there were a lot more people looking at it. And we were kind of becoming this little, remember I said the guy that worked for YouTube, we were kind of like this little cash cow for YouTube. So why would you go after it? I mean, yeah, other conspiracies, not as much. But if there's one conspiracy out there that's making, you know, that's getting a lot of clicks and a lot of views. Remember, YouTube is no different than any other television outlet. And there's, their ultimate goal is to have you watching them all the time. Right? They, they want you to watch whatever it is. And if you're stuck on a channel... They don't care. As long as you're watching that, they're, it's on their network, they don't care. So if you watch 40 YouTube videos in a row, or in a row they, you know, that's, that actually helps our, our cause, which means because they're not going to destroy Flat Earth. Again, it comes down to money. And so, yeah, we, we survived that pretty well. Okay. Thanks yeah. for answering that one. Um, Noble, you still there? Where do you I go? am here, indeed. Um, so, I've been taking a quite a few um, transatlantic flights you know, over the last few weeks and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and as usual, I always have a look um, at the window. I would normally videotape the the departures and arrivals. Sure. And I was thinking to myself, flat earth, obviously I've looked out the window, I've done the video, it's in the horizon, totally flat, mm -hmm. obviously going up to no more than, say, 37,000 feet, as everyone has highlighted and seen, you, we're, we're staying flat, we rise up, we go in one direction, and for the remainder of those eight hours, 12 hours, wherever you're going, long haul wise, you're going to be on a straight dark trajectory, maybe occasionally banking from maybe left to right but not very often right the main banking you will do is on the approach to the airport and then you will start to descend right traveling at 500 plus miles an hour sometimes even 700 according to the the little display that i've got on the yeah. seats yeah if you get a tailwind yeah you can that's true this is it yeah so so i'm thinking of speed and then i'm thinking of flat earth yeah. and i'm thinking oh, okay you know, they're saying that we're on a spinning globe that's going 24,000 miles now, whatever the, the, the number is. At the same time, we're going through, we're twisting as well through the, the, the cosmos and all this. So there's basically three forms of, of movement that's taking place on this earth. So, right. And we, we're, 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 we've all been saying, look, we can't feel this. If we're traveling at so fast, why is the water not staying on, etc.? Why can we feel these movements? So I go back to my, my, my various plane experiences and I feel the takeoff. You feel that thrust when you're going on that runway. But after you get to your, you know, after you've ascended and the, the throttle sort of taken off a bit and maybe after 10 to 15 minutes, your body totally acclimatizes to the fact that you're now traveling at 500 plus miles an hour sure. at 30,000 feet in air. Sure. And you don't feel that movement. The only time you feel the movement is when you look out and you can actually see the clouds drifting by, kind of, not zooming by, but you can see them sort of going by. If you're low enough and it's a clearer day, you can actually see you going over, you know, the flat terrain of the plane. Right. But again, I'm not feeling that movement. Fine. The um no I, I I've heard this argument before. There are some that I like better than others, but where I think it initially started 
was it kind of just to give people a, a perspective and you're absolutely right you know if if the uh if the earth is rotating a thousand miles an hour uh, you know around the equator and it's going around the sun at sixty thousand miles an hour and the entire solar system is flying sideways like a plate at half a million miles an hour through the galaxy why aren't we feeling anything and, and yeah you're absolutely right you know you will get acclimatized to certain things however that being said, uh, there are certain things that are also are missing, meaning, okay, fine, you don't feel it from a, a G-force standpoint. And if other people want to argue with that's fine. Uh, what I try to focus on are the stars, meaning the Earth is moving in a certain direction, it's moving around the sun in a different direction, and the solar system is also moving sideways at a different direction, even speeds, and yet we never, and this is where I think it kind of gets muddled, we never sense any movement. Meaning when you look at the star trails, they don't change. They should be corkscrewing around in a whole bunch of different di different directions. And some people say, like science will come back and say, well, no, they're so far away. You're not going to sense any changes in the star trails. And I'm going, well, no, if, you, if you consider parallax, you should. Because the nearest star is, what, four light years away? If you want to round it up to 10, that's fine. But they also say... There are stars that are thousands, if not tens of thousands, if not millions of light years away. And yet, kind of like a, like a telephone pole that's next to you and a mountain that's off in the distance, you should see stars moving out of alignment with each other. We should see the, the parallax, and we don't see that ever. And they're saying, again, they'll come back and say, well, it's the distance. You'll never see it. I'm going, okay. Uh, don't forget the zodiac is still the zodiac and though that zodiac the the star formations haven't changed in what a couple thousand years so if you want to say the stars don't change over the course of an hour or a day or a week or a month or a year that's fine i i, I may even give you that because of the distance but 10 years a hundred years a thousand years there's got to be some parallax there got to be and and we don't see it um the other, the other thing i'll throw at you is with it, when you're on the plane, I'll, I'll throw it back at you. When you're on that plane, you're right. You don't sense any movement at all. And that's actually one of our big points, which is the planes are flying perfectly level. Now, human beings may not be able to detect how, uh, you know, distances and relative motion, but we can sense motion very, very well. So even if the, the plane noses down 500 feet, you're going to feel it. When you're on that plane, it's flying perfectly level. It's perfectly level. You don't sense anything. And yet, when it's flying over the curvature of the Earth, especially at 500 miles an hour, it should be either dipping down or dipping up to account for the curvature. Because remember, every 50 miles, you're talking 1,700 feet worth of curvature. And that's just 50 miles, and you might be traveling 1,000 miles. That's a lot of dipping you might have to do, and yet we never sense it. And you're saying, oh, it's done with yes. micro microprocessor technology, and we just don't sense it. And it's like, oh, okay, yeah, okay, fine. You, if you want to you wanna say that nowadays in 2018, we don't sense it, that's fine. What did they do in 1950 when commercial airliners were out? What about 1960? You know, when when did the technology get into place where it was auto adjusting? If you say, well, it's done off of altitude meters, eh, not, it's, it's not that precise. You're going to sense it. We don't see it. We bring apps on phones, you know, with us and we never sense any. So in fact, there's a great video. In fact, I'll, maybe I'll send it to you after we're done where there, a guy sent me a thing from flight tracker and it was a weird look where it was showing the vertical stuff not just how the planes are flying over the country but the vertical stuff and that they were showing was the plane goes perfectly straight up almost levels off goes perfectly straight for whatever 500 a thousand miles 2,000 miles and then goes vertically down and i think when you watch the video you're going, wow, that's really interesting, but it's just a computer graph. I'm going, no, they got the data from somewhere. And what's more interesting was, when because they were showing it over the United States, is that the United States, you know, has quite a bit of curvature in 2,000 miles or whatever it is from California to New York. And yet, when you looked at that graphic, the United States was laid out perfectly flat. I'm going, why they flatten out the map? Because the raw data would have been curved. So why are you showing us a flat map? And why are the planes flying perfectly flat over this flat map? Why not just show us the curved map? It would have been easier. Sorry, I, I go off on these tangents, but anyway. I know Pop, that's the best way, Mark, to give these these detailed answers because that's how that's how the audience love it. Oh, good. <laughs> anyway, what else you got? We got your back now, Noble. 
I know Noble had one more question before he wrapped up. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I am back. I am back. Um, yeah, the, the only other question I have is when are we going to have the American, excuse me, contingent arrive in the UK for one of these conferences? I, <laughs> hopefully soon. Uh, I, again, I, I am not going to go into the details of what happened with the UK conference last time. Uh, but it was decided that the UK conference should be just Europeans, which is which is fine. And again, we didn't have, you know, to be fair, when we did the American conference over here, we didn't have, we only had one from out of country, and that was uh, Irusan Ducci from South America. And I think he actually attended yours as well over there. But we'll we'll be mixing it up, I'm sure, soon enough. Remember the in fact we just sent over one of our guys to uh, a conference in South Korea. Just uh, I think it was the beginning of this year. South Korea. Yeah, South Korea. The the Indonesian market and the Pacific Rim uh, can, uh, chapters are really really big. I mean, we're everywhere. In fact, I did a a Skype thing. In in fact, it was just last month, I believe, down in New Zealand where they Skyped me in, and I think they Skyped in Dave Murphy as well, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think and, I, I listened to that one, yeah. That yeah, was a good interview, that though. was a lot of yeah. fun, and it's like, wow. I mean, yeah, it was at a bar. It wasn't exactly the most formal thing in the world, but it's New Zealand. What did you expect? Mm. You know, it, was, it, was, it was really fun. So, yeah, there are, as the, as the movie guy said, we have people everywhere, a lot of people. Um, and I don't want to delve into... Uh, too much of the details, but we, we talked about it on air. But when I was down in Los Angeles, I met celebrities, uh, notable mm. celebrities that were into this, and you know they're still in the closet. Uh, and oh. uh, you know, spoke with my cousin who said that uh, uh, she, you know, she spoke with financial guys, you know, big, higher, high-ranking financial guys that are also into it. And and you know, I again, I'm not going to details of who they are. But indeed, indeed. most of the community is still in the closet because it's still not fashionable to, to, mm, yeah. to come out. I mean, it's getting there. We're, we're on that fringe. Uh, let me end with this, where I got called down to I, I, uh, National Geographic, you know, the, the big periodical. They flew me down to Los Angeles to witness a, uh, a test from a skeptics group that was trying to show us that, indeed, there is curvature. And, you know, they screwed it up horribly. But I, I don't get into that too much. But the fact that National Geographic was talking about this and towards the end of the interview, you know, saying along the lines of how they were concerned that this was, the, you, know, what, you know, what happens to science when this thing gets too big? You know, they were, they were almost speaking about like it's an inevitability. And I realized after I'd met the amount of people that I'd met that it is inevitable because... There is no grapevine that is immune to flat earth, meaning it doesn't matter how rich, how powerful, how talented, how beautiful you are. Flat earth is bigger than you. It's bigger than the president of your country. In fact, it's bigger than your country entirely. So and, and as you know, when people talk, you know, they, they say, you know, after you get, you know, comparing it's like, oh, how's the weather, blah, blah, blah. And sports teams, usually somebody will throw out a story. You know, it's like, oh, hey, well, you know, what's up? What's what's happening? What's going on? What's new? What sort of interesting story? And Flat Earth is the most interesting story I've ever heard of. And so eventually, you, you know, you kind of throw go back and forth until somebody brings it up. And that's why we're seeing it in circles that I, are even surprising me a bit. So yeah, Flat Earth, it's it's, it's going to be it's I, where it's going. I am not sure, <laughs> but wherever it's going, it's going to be big. Great stuff, great stuff. Well, uh, Mark, Sergeant, thanks for coming on once again. As yeah. always, you give yeah. us the great detailed breakdowns, and yeah, that's what that's what that's what we love. So happy to be here. Until next time, um, yeah, we'll be we'll we'll stay locked into the flat Earth clues and right on. Until next time. Oh yeah, and by the way, I did Clue Thirteen, and uh, which is called the Lost Nail. And that just came out a couple weeks ago. And Clue 14 is coming out next week. It's going to be called The Coat of Credibility. Okay. We'll stay tuned for that one. So, right on. No problem. Mark Sergeant. Thanks as always. All right.